it is a tricky situation when you have left a cult. The reason for it, and I'm talking from my personal experience, is because, the, first of all, the cult will do everything it's in its capability, if they'll have access to you, to try to make you feel that you didn't get the picture, you know, that it's your fault, that you're wrong in leaving it, that you're wrong in thinking that it's a cult. And that kind of starts to distort your reality. Uh, that's pretty much an attempt to, to distort your reality, to distort your perception of reality, trying to confuse you uh, and doubt the conclusions that you came to, trying to, to, to put a picture that it's just your opinion. And that's why uh, I personally feel it's, when you're in doubt, it's always best to go to the experts. And uh, one of such experts that I was suggested to check out is... <laughs> Let me check the name so I would, I would get it right. It's uh, Stephen Hassan, and he is the American mental health counselor, but also famous for writing books and talking about the cult mentality, uh, destructive cults, how they work, and how to get out of them, and how to overcome that that feeling of uh, of doubt in yourself afterward. And the he also offers a tool uh, called the bite model which i really enjoy and, and i have to say thank you to one of my viewers uh when i watched when i was talking about the cult mentality and my experience of uh, leaving a cult and overcoming that mentality over overcoming that whole experience and kind of trying to realize what really actually happened uh one of my viewers suggested me to check out the bite model and uh I'm putting it out here right now as I talk, and uh, if you look at it, when I looked at it, it, it was so evident, it, it so quickly became evident that I was indeed in a cult, because when I looked at that model, so many things were shifting to the right side in my experience. There are so many examples where it's like, okay, I can see the ten there were a lot of tendencies to do the things which belong in that in that community, in that, in that organization. There were so many things which uh, are fitting the, the the right side of the model and uh, to put some points onto it i will at the second half of the video i will uh, go to that model and i will talk to you in more detail you know kind of reflecting on how to identify a cult and and how i look at that model personally uh, but on the first part of the video i'd like to share briefly i think <laughs> Uh, something that happened and something that kind of pushed me forward to make this video and to be fair uh, I, I was planning to make this video already for some time because I really enjoyed the bite model it really gave me a lot of clarity uh, but also something else happened this week that kind of pushed me to, to record this video and uh, the thing is uh, in the new channel the journey I started realizing that uh, the experience that I had being a part of a certain community, a certain organization for years and years uh, and eventually kind of being pushed out of it because of having a different mindset, different, different challenging the, the belief structure of it. Um, then after leaving it a couple of years later, I, I, I would sometimes already start to use that the name of cult or the term of cult already at the first days. There's an original video where uh, I recorded pretty soon after just leaving it and, and I, I used the term cult a few times, I guess. Intuitively, I felt that there's something cult-like-ish about it. But the more I dug into what a cult is and the more I reflected back about my experiences uh, with less of an involved and influenced mindset, you know, I wasn't, nobody w was telling me anymore from that organization, what's right and wrong, and, and trying to make me feel like I, I don't get it. Uh, having stepped away from that mentality, I had a chance to reflect back, and I realized, the more I looked at it, the more I realized, shoot, there is a lot of things which kind of put that organization into the realm of a cult. And, and one of those moments is, I, I specifically looked up uh, the definition of a cult and actually let me bring that up uh, right now so a cult a system of religious veneration and devotion 
uh, directed towards a particular figure or object. So uh, in that, I will dig into the bite model soon enough and uh, I'll explore in more detail through my reflections of you know, what, what made me realize that, that it was a cult and what can help each one of us dealing with that subject become more clear about making that definition. But already that, that, that definition that I read here was already a hint because it points out that there's a devotion it points out that there's a devotion toward, directed towards a particular figure object. And in that organization, there was a lot of devotion towards the creator, the founder, the leader of the organization. And the tricky part, which I think I will keep bringing up in, in this reflection in this video is, the tricky part is that that individual, the leader of that, of that organization, uh, what I consider to be a cult, uh, was very subtle about all the things like officially a lot of things were stated like there were a lot of layouts and setups which were claiming that this is not a call that this is different that that it's all we're all equal and and you know it's like uh, it's all about freedom and 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 being your own self and and self-expression and uniqueness but so all of that was enforced uh theoretically uh, but and that that was the tricky part. But because when you would look, there's a bit of noise. But when you would look at the actual actions, and that's when I separated from, or I, when I started separating from that that organization, I what helped me is because I started to reflect about a lot of different cases which just did not make sense. They were what was told, and some of the actual actions that were made, especially by the leader of that organization, they were two different things. Like there were a lot of dissonances. There were a lot of cases where what was told and what was acted and what happened in the organization, even in the inner structure, you could see that they're not the same thing. And, and but again, that made it very tricky because mentally when you would reflect, you would think, but no, but it was said that this is, you know, this is all about equality. And then you would have to dig dig into your intellectual reflective self into your rational self and take out examples raw examples and look at them and realize well this is clearly not an example of what was spoken about and there's you know there's and there's a lot of them so I could go down that path even further and I might bring up some examples during the exploration of the bite model uh, but coming back to the reflection and what happened this week uh, so I the point was that I, in the new, in this, in the channel of the journey, I started reflecting more and exploring more, also with the help of other people and professionals, experts, uh, trying to understand. So what happened and if it's true, whether it was a cult or not, and and or whether it's you know whether I'm just delusional. And that uh, the more I looked at it, the more I realized it makes sense to categorize it as a cult and. Okay, let, I can be fair to some degree by saying, uh, you know, Hassan, I think it's Stephen Hassan, right? Uh, he says that, yeah, Stephen Hassan, he says that the cult can be extremely uh, destructive. It can be somewhere in the middle, or it can be a cult, which is, you know, it's just like like kind of almost okay. He, we, we, the I was listening to a podcast of him talking to Joe Rogan, and there's a podcast with him and uh, Steven said that like even Mac, Mac users, you know, Apple users, uh, to a degree they can be defined as a cult, but it's not necessarily like a destructive cult. It's destructive when it leaves a negative trace in your psyche. And now as when I, when I started to consider myself to be a, a former member of a cult, I, I do feel there was a lot of damage uh, done in my in a psychological state in my relationship and part of that was because again of what Stephen brings up because there was a, uh, in, in in destructive cults as he describes it there's a lot of guilting and making there's a lot of guilting and, and fearing or basically there's a lot of a lot of methods that make you feel guilty as a member or afraid or ashamed and so I'll dig into that just in a second I'll just wait for the noise to pass. All right, so the noise moved and we can get back to the subject. So I kept referring and mentioning that something happened 
this week, which uh, got, which happened probably because in this new channel, the journey, I started dissecting my experience and coming to the conclusion that the organization that I was part of could be defined as a cult. And uh, that's uh, after the one of the latest videos I released, that wasn't even a video about that, but uh, I got a message from my old, uh, from, from the leader of the organization that I was part of. And it's been a few years since we even had even one bit of contact. The last conversation we had was over the phone when I left the organization and it was not pleasant. I was, I was offering very, I was offering various pieces of feedback and I didn't feel like it was received and eventually we couldn't come to any agreements and pretty much we had to cut the, the conversation and, um, and there was no contact whatsoever afterwards. I didn't reach out, that individual didn't reach out. And then I get a message and that message, I was hopeful that it will be a positive message reaching out for me to communicate and and, and saying that maybe there's something true in what I say and there, that there's a willingness to listen and exchange opinions. But instead, it was just a message asking me to stop calling that organization a cult. Uh, interestingly enough, funny enough, that's exactly what I expected. I was hoping something that there will, it will be more constructive, but that's kind of what I was expecting to get, uh, knowing the, the person, the individual behind the message. And uh, uh, I responded by saying that I do my best to never mention which organization I'm, I'm talking about, to never mention the name of the leader of that organization. I'm really doing it just primarily because I feel the importance of not only exploring my own personal experience to, to overcome it, to evolve, to develop, but also uh, for others to benefit, because I, I bet there's a number of individuals, I know, as a matter of fact, that it's true that there's a number of individuals who went through very similar experiences, uh, not even in that same organization, it's just, it just happens. And I know that it's a difficult struggle to be in that experience and to, to overcome that experience. And, and I feel the importance to talk about that subject and explore it in the best degree possible for the sake of the better of everyone who might benefit from it. Uh, I also I also made the point that you know there is a chance that that organization uh, I made the point that to that leader of the organization I made a point that there is a chance that it is a cult it's just not recognized internally and I feel that that's that's even more important that I, I speak my mind about it uh, in, in as honest way as I can, uh, because there is a, a famous event, which I think I referenced in one of my videos, where a famous spiritual teacher named Andrew Coben, his top students wrote a book about him, sharing stories how he's actually abusive and, uh, and not such a good person, and how unfair he was and traumatizing he was towards them. And they also used the help of a known I think psychiatrist, psychotherapist, I don't remember. Uh, and they came to a conclusion that that individual is a narcissist uh, based on, def on the definition of, of it. And after that book was released, uh, the spiritual teacher eventually admitted that they're right, that actually he's not that good. And, and he, he realized that he made mistakes and, and he stepped down from that position. Uh, and I, I personally think that's a great event. I think it's great that that was done but, and I was referenced to that moment, I said, you know, so I'm, I'm not even directly challenging that organization, but I'm saying that, you know, that it's important to bring up these opinions because they may be true and they may, may create positive change, create positive reflections. And uh, that I felt, I expressed that I felt that I'm trying, I'm, I'm being, there's an attempt to censor me, to censor my opinion, to censor my experience. And... That message did not get any, get any responses. The next message was basically just, just telling me that I am hurting, and this is a quote, you know, I'm hurting the individual, the, the leader of the organization, that, it's hurt, that it hurts him that I do this, that it's painful for him, basically. Um, and uh, again, that basically I should just stop doing it. And, and that's where, you know, now 
already I caught that something is off at that moment. And then later I reflected about that with uh, a few different individuals who are psychotherapists. And uh, there was, and uh, there's something noticed that, you know, that there's, that's a lot of, that's guilting. You know, that's trying to make me feel guilty for doing that because, you know, it wasn't some strong argument, counter argument, proving me wrong. It was just trying to play with my guilt by saying that I'm hurting that individual as if that's a reason not to talk about something that is potentially very important. Uh, you know, I spoke with another, as I said, I, I later tried to reflect about this with a, a few different individuals who I have high respect um, uh, to, uh, to, and who I feel are very intellectual and, and, and knowledgeable. And one of these people um, pointed out to me that that idea that sometimes it's important to ask yourself, would I ever make such a statement? Would I ever uh, communicate in that way? And if I would never do that, or I mean, I would, you know, well, never is a strong word, but basically, you know, if, if I wouldn't express myself that way because it's just not fair, then uh, it's most likely that it's unfair of the other person to do that too. But that whole conversation, it brought back a lot of ref reflections again in, in, in me. And, um, and that's what made me reconsider and re-reflect. Okay, so, so what's off about this moment already? And, uh, and what helps me realize that I'm not on the wrong here, you know? That there is, nobody's perfect, and I'm not saying I'm, do I'm doing this perfectly, but, but there's something off on the other side of the picture. And that's where I want to start digging down into the bike model to, to establish better and to give arguments to why I do consider that that experience, that that organization could be defined as a cult and, uh, and why, you know, it's, it's not fair for, for that organization to just ask me to stop calling them a cult, even without directly mentioning who I am referencing. Now it's raining, so let's move back to the other place. All right, so it seems we're going to have this romantic talk in the rain. <laughs> but yeah, let's, so let's eventually get to the part of the bike model. What makes me consider, you know, my experience uh, to qualify my experience as being a part of a cult. So I'm putting this up right now. You can see the model and I'll slowly look at it. So, so the destructive, uh, and obviously, you know, the more you go to the right, the more extreme it is. And I'm sure there are very extreme cases. As I said, I'm not saying that mine was very extreme, but it was towards that side. It was more destructive because it left that trace of negative influence. And uh, it was already building that while I was part of the organization, but, but yeah. So first statement is clones, a destructive cult clones people. And that one is a, is a hard one to, it's, it's more hard to prove, it would be more hard to prove, I'd say. But, but when I reflect and ask myself, okay, so in that organization, was there cloning happening? I'd say definitely. It was because in one of the videos I mentioned, there was there was already a certain level of censorship there. Like there were some words which were highly suggested not to use, like control, which is you know kind of a weird thing. And I could understand you know the idea of avoiding certain words to create a certain mindset. But again, when that's highly criticized, they're like, don't use that. You know, that's not a good word that's that's that would create a that's not only kind of almost like in a sense of forbidding but uh, also eventually with such cases what would happen that everyone who's a part of that organization would have a pretty much the same vocabulary like very they would use the same metaphors the same expressions that you would use they would emphasize the same words and wouldn't emphasize other words and yeah, i guess you know it's it's even steven uh, the person behind this model talks that you know cults are everywhere it's not just religious it's not just spiritual it can be it can be a business cult it can be a, you know a certain even like psychology cult psychotherapy cult it can be cults can be any, everywhere and you can see that phenomenon happening in other places but the thing is when i think the issue that i see here is when you are structuring the way people should express themselves and highly suggesting a certain way of expressing yourself, 
uh, then uh, then that ends up being kind of a, a sample of cloning people uh, because you you start to feel there are certain good ways to act and certain bad ways to act and you start to act more what comes down to like the leader of that organization because that he is the one defining what is right and what is wrong and and I did hear like even when I was a part of that organization I remember an external person who was visiting the organization was telling oh you know you it wasn't like a criticism but that was just a, a reflection they said you all move like that leader you know you're, there's always like you all kind of have a similar sense sense to him. like you can see that you're you're his students and that's usually again that's a reference that there's some cloning there uh if you look on the right right side the first statement is censorship and i already you know said <laughs> what happened this week so that kind of proves my point uh, and that's more or less why I was pushed out of the organization. There, when I started publishing uh, videos on YouTube, which were, uh, which had a different statement than the organization, which was uh, kind of challenging the belief structure. Uh, I don't want to go too much into detail of how that happened, but it wasn't again. It wasn't nice, and. Uh, Eventually, there was kind of a suggestion that okay, if you if you're if you, you you have to stop expressing yourself on that level to that degree in this way, if you want to be a part of this organization, and uh, that's eventually why I decided to quit. I said it's it's for me it's unacceptable, and and now the 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 demand for me to ask for me to stop just bluntly stop using the reference of a cult. For me, that's that censorship. Um, if I continue on obedience, that was a big one. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it was subtle. You know, it would not be mentioned uh, officially by any means whatsoever. On the contrary, different things, the contrary things would be the opposite things would be spoken about. That it's all about freedom and etc. But if you would, when you would look at the actions, when you would look at the actual things that were happening. Uh, there was a lot of like there was definitely and this is there I can see there's you know there's some points the pyramid and authoritarian that applies to the same but there was a very much top very much top to bottom structure where the leader was the decision maker and you couldn't actually like really make a full on decision like a big decision without his approval and even the the the, stru the way the structure was created. It was funny because everybody would feel like they have to ask for permission of the leader. And that was not officially demanded, but the way things were set up, you just felt like you had to. Because if you, there would be cases, even myself, I would do something uh, without, you know, checking in with that individual. And I would get punished for, you know, for like, why did you not ask me? And, and there was the one funny case which really shows me that. <laughs> is when I was traveling, because it was in a different country, I was traveling to visit that individual and uh, another part of the organization, a member who were like, we used to be good friends at the day, uh, he said, oh, I would like to invite you to my house, to my place, but I first have to ask the leader, I mean, obviously he wasn't referring to him, the leader, but basically that's what it was. I have to ask the leader if you can visit uh, if you can visit me and come to my place for a night, which is crazy, you know, that's an adult uh, asking if he can invite me over. Uh, and another case, which was which is kind of crazy and funny. Again, when I was going to the country to, to the country to to visit that individual, uh, another friend of mine invited me for for a couple of nights to a different city to spend a night. And I said, oh yeah, sure, I will. Like like the last couple of nights. And the leader of the organization, he was. He was upset and was directly expressing to me that he was upset that I did not consult with him and ask him if I can, if uh, did, I did not consult with him about staying over at extra nights at that person's place. Although I, was ne I never promised that I will be specifically, you know, visiting you from this day to this day. And, and he was upset. He was upset that I did not ask for his, basically just did not ask for his permission. That was not obviously clearly stated, but that was the case. So, so kind of that kind of obedience yeah, for sure, it was there. Doctrine over personal experience. Now, I'd have to def I'd have to dig in more into exactly what Stephen means by that. But I can again kind of 
uh, relate with it, and uh, that that there were certain things in the organization which were considered to be truth above all. You know, like this is the right thing, and even if if your experience, and now that I'm reflecting, actually, yeah, that was definitely there. Even if your experience was dictating something else, and you would come in, and you know, I'd say. I, me or someone else would say, you know, actually my experience kind of shows different results. Usually that wasn't re- that wasn't encouraged and that wasn't really accepted. It was more of a, there was more at that moment there was more of a uh, an attempt to, to to deny your experience to tell you no you're wrong. It's actually like that. Like so basically there was not there was not a lot of space for having a different opinion or or different experience. There was always an attempt to reframe your experience and tell you no no actually you know you didn't understand it well let me explain you how it is um so even like when i fell out at the very last stages of the experience that was one of the main reasons because my experience was different than the leader of the of the organization and you know i i i we couldn't find we can see eye to eye and I, I i was given no space to stay there and it's also interesting too you know because you could i could consider and think Oh, maybe it's just me. You know, it's just me that that didn't we didn't we didn't understand each other. But the, the crazy and again almost funny, ironically funny and kind of sadly funny part is that I I know a a, a, a significant amount of individuals who used to be a part of that organization. You know, I, I I could make a whole list of them who started having a different opinion and event and they were pushed pushed out. Like, like, like in subtle ways, uh, you know, I, I don't think anyone was directly kicked out, but the conditions were created where they just have felt like they have to leave, including myself. And there's like a whole load of those people, which the people who didn't see eye to eye with the leader, they all eventually felt the push to leave the organization. So, you know, and, and, and again, the leader's attempt is to try to make me or those individuals feel guilty or ashamed that we didn't understand him and it's our fault and you know and 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 but that's like that's 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 the cult mentality that's that's the sign of the cult so so yeah uh moving on uh dependency so i think that's kind of obvious now with the things i said like my friend asking for permission asking like can i invite him over and that was like all all over the place including myself uh even when I left the organization and went back to my country, I kept writing emails to to, to the leader asking, like, do, is that okay? Is that, is that okay if I do this? Is that okay? And I do you think that's a good idea? But especially when I was directly you know, in the organization, being next to him, like that that dependency sense was always there. And there, there was a sense like if I if I will be without him then I will be doomed, you know, like, 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 man, oh man, how much do I need him? And I, I, I know that, and I, I recognize that most of the students, most of the members of the organization felt like that. They felt like, you know, we, we it's so important that, that we stay in connection with him. It's so important that, that, you know, we, we check in with him. And th- there was a lot, a strong sense of dependency, which I can definitely say that it was in me. And again, you could say, you know, blame me, but like, oh, you're just a dependent person. But trust me, it was structural. It, uh, it was systematic, the, the way it was implemented. And I could also recognize it in other people, including that, that funny story with my friend asking me if I can come over. Uh, fear phobia, that was a big one. That, that was a big one. Uh, a, a direct story which, which helped me, helps me realize that was not only my case. I was going with another buddy of mine, and we were both like... Mm, part of that organization and uh, we did something uh or i I don't remember it was it it was just him or or we did it together but uh he was concerned that he was like oh my he was like oh my god i'm I'm so i'm so concerned that when we're gonna get back we're gonna get our asses kicked like i i really clearly remember that conversation he wasn't he was terrified that he will get get punished psychologically, not physically, but he will get punished by the leader because he did something that wasn't according to him. And I, I remember I was afraid as well, and I could relate to that fear so much. You know, we we're both kind of going and being afraid and like, 
oh my goodness, you know, this is like, oh, we're going to get our asses kicked. This is going to be so bad. Eventually, like, even that uh, case, it didn't happen. I think we didn't actually, it turns out we, we didn't upset the leader. But there were so many cases where, where I got psychologically punished for doing something which that individual did not want me to do. So I was constantly in fear. I was always thinking, I always had that fear of, I, I, I felt kind of, again, coming back to that dependency, I felt that sense of, damn, you know, like, uh, will he approve this? Is it okay if I will do this? What will he think? And, and crazy, where I can be totally honest and, 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 you know, do my best to be vulnerable with you, uh, crazy that that sense is is somewhere there even like till today like like there's a bit of a fear in me recording this video because i know that it may have implications with that individual it may upset him and it's crazy that i'm that part of me is afraid of that it's just mental it's nuts it's not healthy at all but it just shows how deep that cult mentality and that programming of a cult goes into you and again to give you a sense that it was just not me it wasn't just an individual thing uh, when I was when I started to fall out with with the leader of the organization, uh, and I started to reflect and tell him, you know, actually I'm seeing some things which I don't think are good for me in our relationship. And I told him, I explained to him, and argumented that that there is a strong sense of fear from me towards him, and and it was hard to take that for him. Uh, at the day, he I think I made I think I made good enough arguments, so he had a hard time neglect not disagreeing. I think. I don't remember exactly, but I think the tendency was trying to tell me that it's my experience, you know, it's just, it's, it's my character and so on. It's kind of like, you know, he, he, he didn't prevent that, but, but it's more or less my thing. But then at the very end, end of our meeting, I said, you know, I'm also concerned and I also see signs that one of the other top members of the organization has a, and, and also someone else even particularly told me that 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 in that person has also a very fearful relationship with the leader and the thing he told me he said that it's not of my business he literally told me it's not of your business like my relation that his relationship with that person i can i quote it's none of my business he said it in an angry voice and he never spoke about it again so basically that seems that shows that there was a, a conscious recognition of the leader that there is a fear driven relationship but but he didn't even want to discuss that with me or 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 admit it so crazy shit <laughs> crazy crazy shit a uh, few more things pressure to think the right way i think i already made some i think i already made some points about that like uh, there was a strong suggestive suggestiveness to to consider some things as true there was a strong um attempt to to prove you wrong if you had a different opinion and uh, and uh, there was a suggestiveness to what words are, are appropriate, what words are not appropriate, what are good examples, what are bad examples. There's definitely a pressure to feel, to think the right way. And uh, I also spoke recently with another member uh, of that organization. We only got to know each other rec just recently, but he used to be a member of that organization with the same leader, under the same leader, uh, like like more than a decade ago. And when he started thinking differently, he told me that not only did he like felt like he had to, you know, there, there was that push away as well, but uh, the leader kept calling him like day after day, trying to convince him and tell him that he's wrong. Like he's, the way he expressed it, he said like for like a month or two months, which is just mental, it's nuts. You know, who does that? What sane person with the same, same you know, mental capacity who does not have a cult mindset would would keep insisting on calling someone who has a different opinion to try to prove them wrong, to try to convince them that that the leader's way is the right way. It's it's ugh, that's cult, 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 right? Uh, pressure to feel the right way. Then this one is tricky, you know, because feelings are subtle. But I I do have some reflections about that too. So the pressure to feel the right way. It was, um, how do I describe this? Like, I do remember because it was a spiritual community, spiritual organization, and, and there were moments where I would feel in a certain way and I would express, you know, that I feel like that. And I can't give right, very clear examples, but I, I remember that, that there were cases like that where I would express, you know, I feel like this, and, 
and there was a suggestion that no, no, you know, that feeling is not the right one, or like, you know, you shouldn't feel that way, more or less, you know, the, the right feeling is this feeling, and, and, and again, I can't give you precise examples, and that's why I don't want to spend so much time here, but I do remember that being part of my experience, and that's, again, that's crazy, you know, to suggest to someone that you should be feeling, that your feeling is somehow not valid, that, that you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's just crazy. And uh, pressure to behave the right way, oh yeah, for sure, again, like, you know, there were things which were appropriate, things which were not appropriate, there was a very clear structure, like, you know, the, the leader would always sit at the end of the table, if you would, if you would sit at that place, you would be suggested to, <laughs> to move away and give the space to, to that individual, uh, you know, stuff like that, like, like certain behaviors, uh, to kind of check in, to double check, to ask. Uh, again, it's hard to name all of them, but, but there was definitely a sense of that. And if we look at organizations, uh, pyramid organization, yes. Again, as I said before, while, while it was officially stated that it's, it's, uh, that it's, we're all equal and so on and so forth. And it wasn't like hardcore e equality. There was a, a recognition that the leader is the leader, but, but there was a suggestion, there was kind of a, a thought of line that no, but we should act as equals and so on. But, but, oh my goodness, yes, there was a pyramid. Like everyone would, you know, the, 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 the main guy was the main guy, the leader was the leader. Every, every base, every major decision was based on him. Everybody felt he had to check in. I mean, from all the stories I gave you before already, I think you, you feel that that was the case. Authoritarian, same thing. Um, the ends justify the means. Yeah, I'd say there was a sense of that as well, where even uh, even when the person, the, the, the leader would act inappropriately and, and on very rare occasions he was caught uh, and that was kind of brought to, 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 this, to, to the subject, there was, kind of a, there was kind of a narrative of, well, but you know, that's, that, that created you know, the good results or that was done because I want the best for you and I, I, I think that will be best for you and I thought that will be best for you or, or something like that. And like even like ends justify the means even reflect about the message I mentioned to you that I received, the, the exchange I lately had. You know, there was a, there was a suggestion, there was one of the sentences was telling me like, didn't, didn't, didn't I do you good by, no, I'm not quoting, but basically that, that was it, you know, didn't I do you good by doing this and doing that, I give you this and I give you this opportunity and so on. And, and, and I, I, I didn't respond to that because, you know, I, I was still asked, uh, waiting for my answer to my question. But my thought in my mind was, it was, uh, it still doesn't mean it's not a cult. It still does mean a lot of bad shit wasn't done to me. No, it didn't. It didn't mean it doesn't neglect all the psychological negative impact that whole experience had on me, and um, so ends justify the means. There was almost like a sense of that that oh look this and this and this good thing happened, you know a list of these good things. That means everything is good. That means everything that was bad is justified. And hell not, no, no, you know my 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 thought that I had in my mind is. If, if somebody raped me, right, and that would make me, that would traumatize me in a way where that trauma would make me self-reflect and, you know, become like a therapist and help people who were raped, uh, and then the rape, rapist would come and tell me, oh, you see, I did you good, you know? It, eventually, it was for your own better. It's like, fucking asshole, you know? You know what I mean? Do you see what I mean? Maybe I'm not... You know, expressing myself as clearly as I, I'd like to, but but for me, that's that's an example of like you cannot justify your action because of that. Yes, you know, bad things sometimes lead to good things eventually, but it doesn't neglect the fact that it's bad, and you shouldn't justify the bad thing for it. And closed preserves power. Again, there was always a power play of making sure that the leader maintains the power, that everybody knows that the leader maintains the power. The power was given to some degree, and, and power is mostly given to people who would be most compliant, who would agree most, and that was also me. You know, I was a very devoted student, I was, I was a very devoted member, 
and I was given, to a degree, I was given quite a bit of power, a bit more than others, I think, at times. Also, I think because I just, you know, I, I had my own mind. But I think part of that was, you know, the power was given to me because I didn't question the ultimate power. And uh, as soon as I started to question the ultimate power, then I was basically pushed out, which is, again, a power play. So, uh, so these are my reflections. And, you know, I could, I could go on and, you know, make a list of, like, uh, like really sit down and make a whole list of stories arguing and, and, and making a point that, you know, this, this really shows that this point is true and this point is true. And, and now I'm more just kind of reflecting with you in a live way. I could also reach out to other members of that organization and, uh, you know, and just uh, ask them, you know, do the Andrew Cohen thing. Ask everyone to write who, who fell out with that, in, with that community, to, with that organization, to write numerous stories which would prove as arguments that, you know, that, that it is a cult. Uh, but I personally don't think it's necessary. And this is where I think that individual, individual doesn't get me. I, I forgot to say one more thing. In that exchange, that individual was, was suggesting that I'm doing all of this for money and for entertainment. And, you know, this is a quote. It's a quote. He, he was saying that, you know, it's being done for money, finances, and entertainment. This is just crazy. You know, it's such an immature way to look at what I'm doing. There's no perception that actually I believe that this is right. There's, there's actually a, a belief in that individual that it's, it's, a, it's an ego trip that I'm on. And it's, again, it's kind of blaming and shaming me, making me feel like, you know, I'm, I, that I should feel guilty because I'm, I'm acting out of ego, egotistical means. So, uh, my point was though, uh, I think, yeah, so that person thinks that I'm in, the, in a direct war with that organization, that it's all about me wanting to take them down. And honestly, that's not how I feel. And if I would, and I was telling, I was telling that in the exchange, if I would want to take down that organization, I have the means, I have the tools, I have enough subscribers and followers and, 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 and connections to, you know, I could bash them to pieces. You know, I could, I could go on the Angie Cohen's way, write a book. I could, I could collect a, a video of testaments. You know, there's so many things I could do to completely destroy them. And I don't because, you know what, I think I do feel the importance of bringing up these points, of, of sharing my narrative, of sharing this exploration, because I already know as a fact from some people who reach out to me, it's helpful not only for me, but also for others to learn that they're not alone, that they went through the same experience and, and that this is a universal experience and, and that actually they are sane and they shouldn't feel guilty about it. They should re-empower themselves as well. So that's, that's my main goal. And uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, they, they're living their own life. You know, and that organization, I do admit sometimes on record, there were some good things I was given and, and hopefully they're not hopeless. Hopefully there will be a moment of self-reflection and they will look and they will recognize that if so many people fell out for having a different mindset that maybe, you know, there is a high chance that it is a cult, a destructive cult, and maybe they will change, you know, and, and I don't want to start a war either where, where they try to directly you know, take me down, and I, I have a feeling they might try. So it just would be messy, and so eventually, I'm just I'm not going on a crusade. I'm leaving them be. You know, whoever needs to know who 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 is who, they'll know. But it's it's their thing, you know, and they don't need to listen to me. I'm just making my arguments. I'm just sharing my opinion, and uh, and if if somebody in the organization uh, realizes that. You know, they look at my arguments and realize, actually, you know what, that reflects my experience. There's, there's one individual who connected with me, who, who, which that was the case. He told, me I, I, he told me that in the beginning, he did not believe me. He, he, he thought I'm full of shit. You know, he was deep in the organization as well. And everybody was telling that I'm a bad person, you know, that I'm, I'm trying to take them down, etc. But then with time, he started to think about what I said and he realized, you know what, that he started to recognize that my arguments and what I ex described he started to witness cases of that, and he started to see that it's true, and eventually he had to leave as well. So, uh, so that will happen naturally. There's no need you know, for a direct war. 
So having said all that, yeah, this is this is where I stand. This is you know, how I feel, and especially the first part of the video, I, I admit, you know, it was it was kind of a moment of a vulnerable state, and uh, and I do want to point out that that's again why I I feel that's why I cherish this journey. That's why I cherish this channel. That's what made I think the Marshall's journey great as well is that most people are on Instagram and social media, they're all about, oh, look at my positive experience here, look how I know this, look how I know that. I think so many people suffer, so many people have challenges and difficulties, but but they're not, they don't openly talk about that. They don't reflect about it, and then we all feel alone. We all feel like we're only ones suffering from that, from that experience, but then that's why I feel it's so important for me that when I am in that vulnerable state to not hide it, to not pretend it's all 100% fine with me, but to put it on record. That's why I feel, you know, that, that draw to come in and say, you know what? I'm open to talk about this. This is how I feel. This is a difficult moment for me, but we'll get through this together. So, so yeah, just if you're wondering. <laughs> and the very last part I wanted to say in this video is, you know, there's always a chance that I am wrong. As far-fetched as that seems when I make all those arguments and I make that reflection and so many people connect with me and they, you know, so many different people connect with me and they tell me that they, they relate with me, both outside of that organization and within, within that organization and smart people, you know, smart individuals. But even so, you know, uh, I don't think I'm wrong, but you know, there's always stuff, there's always place for improvement. And, and if somebody would make great counter arguments to what I say, I'd appreciate it. And that's where I'm saying, you know, that, that's where I also see my YouTube videos as a feedback loop. So if you are looking at this video, watching this video, and you're thinking like, oh, Rokas is delusional. You know, he's, he's unfair to that organization. You know, he's doing the wrong thing. Then, then tell me in the comments. I'll, I'll listen into it. I'll think about it. I'll reflect on it. And, uh, and also too, I will be sending this video to uh, three different individuals uh, who, are, uh, who have degrees in psychotherapy, different fields, and uh, they're unconnected to each other, even in different countries. And I will, I will ask for a favor for them to watch this video and to tell me if it's unfair, if, if, if I'm being unfair and, and if I'm, you know, I was also in that exchange, I was called a bully, that I'm a bully and that I'm doing this for clickbait, money and, 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 and entertainment. So if you think this is, you know, all clickbait and, and entertainment and money, then uh, yeah, let me know in the comments, but I also will send this video to those uh, established, experienced experts of, of psychology and psychotherapy and uh, I'll ask them to watch this video before I release it to tell me if it's unfair and if they will tell me it's unfair, it's unjust, I'm not being rational, I'm being radical, etc. If they'll tell me and they will suggest for me not to put this video, I will not put this video out, I promise. If they, if you're watching this video means then I got, I got approval to put out this video at least to some degree. You know, maybe, you know, I can't promise everyone will be all in, but, but there was this, there, there was no saying, but th that means there was no saying of, brokers are going nuts, don't do this, you're, you're, you're being unfair, you're being a bully, etc. So, let's connect up in the comments. Thank you for watching, I realized this was a long video. Again, it's, it's, it's a rough edged one where I just, you know, express myself in the moment, but I hope you find it valuable and let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching and until next time.